update. Am I the a-hole for refusing to sleep on the couch? Original post. I, 32 male, and my wife, 31 female, got into a heated argument after her friend accused me of hitting on her. The other day, on my way from work to home, I came across a friend of my wife and she looked like she was carrying heavy stuff, so I asked if she wanted a ride home. At first, she declined, but as I was leaving, she changed her mind and got into the car. We had a nice chat whilst driving and all was well. I even told my wife about it when I got home. Yesterday, I was confronted by my wife because I allegedly hit on her friend. I obviously denied it and told her the version of events, but apparently I was persistent with said friend when offering her the ride. I only asked twice, and the second time was asking if she was sure. My wife insisted that her friend isn't the type to just lie about something like this. Naturally, I asked why she trusted her friend more than me, and then she told me about how her sister's husband cheated with a friend. I was angry at how I was being compared to someone else based on a mere accusation, and we ended up arguing. Then we were just about to sleep, she told me to sleep on a couch, because she didn't feel comfortable with me. I argued that I wasn't going to be punished for something I didn't do, and after her quite back and forth, I eventually let her have the room and slept in the other one instead. I woke up in the morning to yet another confrontation about why I didn't sleep on a couch. I was obviously baffled and asked why I would sleep on a couch when there's an entire other room. According to her, if one spouse tells the other that they should sleep on the couch, then they should do as ask to show that they're sorry. I pointed out that this was ridiculous, especially when you add the fact that I didn't even do anything. Things are now tense, all because I gave someone a lift. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments before reading the updates. Not the a-hole. Whoever doesn't want to share the bed should leave the shared bed. I've always been baffled as to why one partner thinks they get to kick the other partner out of a bed that belongs to both of them. My general rule is that everyone gets to control their own body, like going to sleep somewhere else, but when they start trying to control other people's bodies, like kicking a partner out of bed, then they have become an a-hole. And then being mad because you left and slept somewhere else, but you didn't sleep in the correct somewhere else? Now your wife is a double a-hole. Yep, I agree with you. Boundaries are for me, not to control you. They're the limit of my consent to participate. Also, for the record, not the a-hole OP. OP needs to find a better wife. She's not it. 1. She believed her friend over him with zero proof provided. 2. She didn't leave the shared space herself, instead he must leave. 3. Insisted he must go on a couch rather than a spare room. 4. Said OP must be sorry rather than have a discussion. 5. Not dealing with her own insecurity issues. Unless she agrees to go to therapy and apologizes sincerely, this will likely break trust for OP permanently. And you can't continue a marriage without trust. Wife basically decides whenever she feels like, not reality, that OP must be punished by having a painful night on a sofa rather than a brief separation. OP's wife only feels validated if OP is punished and in pain. Yeah, not sure if therapy fixes that one. Not the a-hole. Your wife's friend has deliberately lied, and your wife believes her over you. She should be sleeping on a couch. You need to warn other male acquaintances about that friend, and never help her again. Never speak to her again, and any time you are in the same location, you need to record the entire time. Not the a-hole. And oh man, do you have problems. That kind of nonsense is a deal breaker for me. Also, what I was thinking, sleeping in the other room wasn't even good enough? Wow. Getting mad that your partner, who you supposedly love, didn't go to the doghouse like you ask, is honestly such a horrible thing to do. On top of believing a random friend over your partner, when said partner told you it happened already. Now for the update. A week ago, I made a post about how my wife got angry at me for not sleeping on a couch after her friend accused me of hitting on her. Well, not too long after the arguments, we eventually confronted said friend, only for another argument to break out, this time between my wife and her friend, and I got more than I bargained for. Basically, the friend denied ever saying I was hitting on her and said my wife took it out of context slash misheard her. My wife argued back saying the opposite, that friend said I was making moves on her and flirting. According to friend, her words were along the lines of, Your husband was very nice to me, and had it been any other person, I would think they're flirting. Honestly, there was a lot of back and forth about what was actually said. But in the end, it was established that I had, in fact, not flirted with her friend. However, because of this argument, things were heated and things were said. 
What got me is when her friend revealed to me that my wife was very insecure and had been keeping tabs on me, checking my phone every now and then without my knowledge and, quote, searching my car and laundry for any feminine product slash scents that did belong to her every so often. Apparently, she's been confiding all this to her friends, and at some point, even considered having one of her friends flirt with me to see what I would do. Needless to say, I'm speechless and very disappointed. It's only now that I realize there wasn't any trust ever in this marriage, and I'm only going to continue suffering because her sister's failed marriage. She's tried apologizing and denying at the same time, to the point where I'm confused what she's apologizing for and what she's denying. I was tempted to give her the same treatment she gave me based on an accusation, but to be honest, I really don't have the energy. As of now, I've asked for some space to contemplate this entire marriage. Thanks everyone for the support and advice. It really means a lot. It seems like a lot of you were right. I think I'll take it from here. Again, thank you so much. Sincerest regards. Wow, OP. She's projected her insecurity so hard it contaminated her friend's view of you and or the friend decided to fake the loyalty test for her? Sounds like she needs a no-contact timeout for the health of your relationship and your wife needs a therapist to vent to instead of crap-steering friends. Good luck, my dude. Thanks for the update. The way I'm reading it, the friend didn't actually accuse OP of anything at all, but OP's wife is determined to find evidence of cheating somewhere because she's so worried about what happened to her sister happening to her. Kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy, pushing someone because they are going to hurt me or leave me or cheat on me until they actually do leave. OP, I am so sad to hear this is happening to you. Don't look for any blame by yourself. You did nothing wrong, and this is a problem of your partner. I totally agree. The worst part about trust issues is that you often end up getting exactly what you fear. Too often, the suspicious behavior that results from distrust leads to conflict and breakup. Next story. Am I the a-hole for not treating my stepchildren equally to my son? When my husband and I got married, we got an extensive prenup, and we agreed that we would each be responsible for providing for our children. It came from a marriage where his ex-wife milked him for cash, and I also like the idea of separate finances. We each pay our own bills. Groceries and a mortgage was split 40-60. Him 60%, me 40%, based on the fact that he has two children, and I have one. I understand that to some people it might seem a bit roommate-ish, but I love it, and I think it works out great. I don't care about the money he wastes golfing, because it's his money, not mine. And I can get expensive sushi all the time. Growing up, my parents would always yell at each other about finances, nitpicking each other's spending. When my husband and I got married, I was in grad school and he worked in finance. He lost his well-paying job and now makes 50% less, whereas my career has flourished in recent years. My son turns 15 soon and he's been asking for a Model 3. I plan on getting it for him because I think he deserves it. My husband recently came to me upset because my son was talking about how excited he is to get a car. That upset his step siblings, who haven't and won't be getting cars. Now my husband said he wants to change how our household bills are split. He wants me to pay 80% and him 20%. His reasoning is because with his pay cut and his ex-wife still taking a large chunk in child support, he isn't able to go for live the same lifestyles before. He also wants me to buy each of my stepchildren a car this Christmas. I basically told him he's out of his mind, and he complains that his ex-wife used him for cash and made him pay all the bills, but that's what he's trying to do to me. He didn't really know how to respond to that, but isn't talking to me now. I find it kind of funny that when I made significantly less money, he had no issue with our finance split. But now that he's the one making less, it's an issue? Am I the a-hole for not wanting to buy my stepkids cars and fund a family? He wants me to top off their college funds too. Edit. I'm a positive role model in my stepchildren's lives. We're pretty close. I go to their sporting events, plan their birthday parties, etc., but they have two living parents who are more than capable of fully supporting them if they tried hard enough, so I just don't feel like it's my place. The kids all know that my husband is responsible for my stepkids' cars in college, and I'm responsible for my sons. They're just disappointed with their dad right now because their friends all have dads who have bought them nice cars, which has made my husband kind of mad. I don't think having cars and college funds are a necessity though, more of a nice to have thing if your parents can afford it. So I feel like my husband should either step up to the plate and get a better job, or get off my back. Now for the top comments, not the a-hole. And you've made super fair points about how he was fine with his split when he was making more. 
I don't see why you should have to finance this lifestyle now. But I don't see how you two are going to maintain your marriage at this point unless your husband comes around and is back to being fine with the original agreement. I'm definitely not going to cave. I had no problem living a cheaper lifestyle when we first got married and he was well off. He still took me out for nice dinners, but my son went to public school and I couldn't have expensive hobbies. If anything, it motivated me to get a good job and finish school. It just blows my mind that he thinks it was fine for me to live that lifestyle but is not good enough for him and his children. Your husband said the president when he didn't send your kids to the same school as his. This is a really good point. This alone confirms not the a-hole. You can pay for your kids' college and car fees with the private school fees you never paid for my kid. He complains that his ex-wife used him for cash and made him pay all the bills, but that's what he's trying to do to me. Love this. You are not the a-hole. Wild, he lacked this self-awareness and had to have it pointed out. Either way, it's going to cause problems. If your stepchildren are getting a car, it should be bought by their parents, and you could help with a small amount if you'd like. But buying three cars all by yourself is ridiculous. Info. How often do your stepchildren stay with you? My stepchildren are with us the majority of the time. They see their mother every other weekend, as well as whenever they ask to. I can afford to buy the three cars. I just don't want to out of principle. I don't think he would buy my son a car if the roles were reversed, which is okay. He's my son, and I acknowledge that I'm responsible for providing for him. Has he had his child support reevaluated with the less money coming in, and the fact that the kids are with him more? Maybe you should start there. You are not the a-hole. This. Why is he still paying so much in child support? If he says anything about his ex-wife and her lifestyle, you know you have a huge problem. He went to get it reduced, but the judge barely reduced it, because his ex-wife lives off it. She just gets disability other than that. The judge's reasoning is because she wouldn't be able to afford her apartment without it, and the kids wouldn't be able to stay with her mother at all if she was homeless. Last story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to move into a new apartment with my boyfriend because it'll mean I have to pay rent? I, 23 female, live in an apartment I inherited from my late dad. It's fully in my name since him and my mom weren't ever married or even in a relationship at all, and he didn't have a wife or other kids. He passed away during peak COVID, and I moved into the apartment full-time last year after graduation. The apartment was in a different city to my university, so I couldn't live in it while I was in university. I met my now boyfriend when I moved to this city. We've been officially dating for just over a year and everything is great with him. Things are getting pretty serious and he suggested moving in together. I was totally on board because I get lonely living on my own and ask him to sleep over so often. He's at my apartment for a lot of time anyway. I just assumed that he'd be moving into my apartment with me so he won't even have to pay rent. But he sent me links to apartments that are already in my area. I had a conversation with him and asked why we couldn't just live at my apartment. He said he wouldn't feel comfortable living in a house that's completely mine and he has no say over. He said if we rent a new place together, then we can have equal say in it. I got where he was coming from, but I was honest with him and said there was no way I was moving out of this amazing apartment that I live in rent-free, just to move into some other apartment in the same area and have to pay rent. I said legally, he would have tenants' rights if we lived together, and I won't ask him to invest in some home maintenance or renovation since that's my business. He still wasn't satisfied and said he still isn't comfortable and is just looking out for himself. He suggested I can rent the apartment out and use the rent money to pay my half of the rent to our new apartment. But I don't want to be a landlord. I have a full-time job and have absolutely no interest in dealing with all the complications that come with being a landlord. After a lot of discussions, I said that since we can't agree, it's better that we just don't move in together and see if we can compromise later down the line. I said it's honestly heard that I can't be bothered to put in any effort for us to live together and that I'm coming off materialistic to be so attached to the apartment to the detriment of our relationship. We've kind of been at a weird awkward place in our relationship now and I just want some perspective I guess. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. It does not make sense for you to take on additional expenses to placate his insecurities and empower his need to control. If he decides to move in, then make sure you consult a lawyer before. Yes, this. Get a prenup agreement. He can also pay your rent, so it feels like his place. I thought of this, but I'm not sure I'd love the dynamic of that. Him paying me for rent to live in a place I own just doesn't feel right to me, and I'm worried that'll create an imbalance in our relationship or even resentment because of how much more disposable income I'll have than him then. 
But if he's fine with it, then I'd be okay with it too. But I also doubt he'd be fine with it. I'll ask him about it next time. OP, it's not about feeling right. It's about not being dumb about this. You own this outright. He should draw up a tenancy agreement. But let's be real, it's not about the rent. He's controlling. Because in no way does any of this makes reasonable sense. He doesn't want to pay rent at your place, but he wants you to leave a place you own just to live with him and waste money? No way. You are being smart. I own and live in a home that I inherited and own outright. My husband moved in with me, which is admittedly different because he moved in after we got married. That said, I do not charge him rent. But if he had asked me to move somewhere else with a mortgage or rent, I would have laughed in his face. What a waste of money. Even if you used her place as a rental, it sounds like you would be paying rent. Why would you rent out your place, with all the maintenance and risks that carries, to turn around and use that rent to pay rent to someone else? The only time it makes sense to do this is to use rental to help pay for a mortgage. That way, you are gaining equity in the home you live in. 